we actually have a uh, a breaking new post from breaking six post. minutes ago from Scarzard explaining the raid reward experiment and how it'll work. Suffice to say, you were wrong. <laughs> Very <Fuck>. wrong. <laughs> oh no! Is it is it bad? Good, it is. Uh, it is uh, heroic and mythic. Drop the heroic and mythic. There you go. I will throw the link into the uh, bottom of the thing. We can go live. Go there back. was me thinking that they yep. were going to uh, that they were going to do the thing. Yep. So they good. were going to kind of replace Titan Forging with it. Yep, Cac so. W indeed. Dak. Cac open, W. Yeah, open that gearing um, doc, and the link will be in the top very shortly. Very shortly. Top. Oh. Also, buds at the bottom as well. Well, ah. <laughs> I put it in for just to make sure. And scars are right after I record a video. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'll re-record that one. Let's yep. have a look. Mm -hmm. Today we'd like to share our uh, plans for Season 4, uh, acquisition and effectiveness of raid gearing. So we heard from the, uh, yeah, 9-2's class set and creation catalyst into Dragonflight. Our team has been doing a lot of thinking about reward philosophies, including how uh, loot basically, uh, you know, how it works, acquisition, how it can be improved. Season 4 presents a unique opportunity to do experimental things that might be too volatile for a regular season, but could give them uh, some good uh, data. It's worth noting that the systems we'll be talking about today are designed by the specific goals to fit with Season four shorter runtime. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. It's very possible if they're received well, they might undergo significant iteration to match the cadence and intended progression of a normal season of content, but regardless, basically, let's go. Yep. Bad luck protection and rewards match effort. Let's go. Season four will feature a trio of broker vendors suspiciously sulking around the great vault. Skulking, not sulking. Skulking. They're very different words. <laughs> oh, Yes. <laughs> Just being sad around the box. I like the players, I guess. Yeah. Um, each of these brokers has wares from uh, the raids. They will hmm. sell trinkets, weapons, and other special items. Each will be the same price. A single puzzling cartel dinar each with a catch. You'll only, oh, yeah, only be able to get three for the entire season. Yeah. After spending your last dinar, they leave town take their wares with them. Items sold will be season four normal yeah. faded items which are, of course, in the range we discussed earlier. To acquire them, kill any Shadowlands raid content after Season 4 begins to start a three-part quest line. These will require you to kill a certain number of unique fated bosses while the raid affix is active. So basically just doing the raid of that week. These quests will reward you with one Puzzling Cartel Dinar upon completion and will progress you to the next part of the quest. At the moment, it is 30 kills, 20 kills, and 10 kills making your second and third coin come faster. So that's basically three weeks for your first coin, an extra two weeks, and then a, mm -hmm. one more, meaning six weeks to get all of your deterministic gear. This system initially mm, came out to mitigate the rotational nature of Season 4 raids. Each player has fewer chances to see any individual uh, piece of loot when fated uh, Sylvanas or fated Jailer is only killable every three weeks, so we really want to see how players respond to the idea of having limit a limited but deterministic way to target individual pieces from raids. We all have a story of going months and months uh, on end, killing a specific boss every week to get a desired option, and they are hoping to curb extreme bad luck. But at the same time, they don't want to short shortcut the experience of actually playing the game. It shouldn't be possible for someone to simply buy their BIS setup from a vendor uh, week one of a given season. And it's very sure. possible this implementation still undercuts some of that sense of progression in your character. I imagine not. Nah, it's fine, mate. Not if you need 60 fucking kills for three items. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Holy shit. How, um, how much do you think people play this game? Good God. <laughs> Good well, God. Uh, that said... We've heard calls uh, for something like this yeah. and feels season four is the time to try. 100%. Better that than traveling it in temp or 11 or 10.0 and it not working. Well, this is the fast version, remember? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but that's what I mean. I mean, I mean it's like... So it'll be 300 yeah. kills for yeah. like season one. So if not for season four existing, if they wanted to try this, they would have to ship it as a box feature for Dragonflight and then any problems have to go live with it. So this is a really cool experimentation time. So now they have this. Additionally, they're exploring ways for raiders to upgrade raid loot as they move up in difficulty in Season 4. Killing bosses in Heroic or Mythic will drop a shard of an upgrade item, and upon getting enough of them, currently 20, they will combine to upgrade a fated gear to their Heroic or Mythic version, respectively. 
Unlike the puzzling cartel Dinar, these just drop at day one of the season, 100% drop rate, allowing you to capture effort progressing week over week uh, from the get-go. These upgrade items will work in any item with a faded tag, including those sold by those broker vendors we previously talked about. The upgrade item system combined with the dinars will allow players to effectively buy three pieces of heroic slash mythic raid gear, assuming you are doing difficult enough content to build reserves of upgrade shards to begin with. Well, having uh, a heroic or mythic upgrade item still requires you to have a base item drop for you in some way. This means that the option of running other raid difficulties to get your desired piece is available for people wanting to go the extra mile. So, interesting with the points of friction we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Some of that is now quite intended in the design. Well, it's actually interesting in because that means that the point of friction of running other difficulties is now not deterministic. Yeah. Because if the if these items drop for you, then it'll be deterministic. But if the, you need the base item, then that's running into the same problem in a way. Interesting. Yeah. Kind of a lose-lose situation in a way with that specific point. Similarly, this lets guilds that start from normal and move into heroic or heroic and move into mythic the ability to carry some of their favorite items with them as they progress. Often, if a guild can't hit a specific breakpoint while progressing, like, uh, you know, new great vault. Yeah. <laughs> like a new boss kill or a great vault threshold because filling up the vault is... The only reason to play? Yep. Uh, it can feel like the time spent re-clearing can be wasted effort. Now, that is very true, so good. Yeah. Uh, we hope this creates more value for simply killing bosses with your group while also allowing those who dip their toes into higher difficulty, say a guild that only does three mythic bosses a week, the ability to save up to a moment of excitement that both rewards your effort over time and making it easier uh, to make deeper strides into achieving your rating goals. I think the thing there is um, just... Uh, her, mythic is a different mode of play because it's a different oh, fixed, that. you know, so yeah. uh, I, I get that this will be here, but this is so incredibly reduced from the days when raids were just 10-25 normal, 10-25 yeah. mythic, because mythic was just stepping into the next difficulty level yeah. with the team you'd already established, whereas mm -hmm. in this, to move up into mythic, you have to establish a new team format for most guilds. Yeah. Uh, I think for also guilds that maybe. Well, just a lot of people enjoy uh, raiding with a smaller yeah, team I size. Really, just going to say it because it's in my head and I want to make a bold statement. 10 man oh. mythic should be the way forward. Absolutely. Because 20 man agree. mythic is perfectly fine, but it doesn't work for so many players. And you know what? When yeah. you actually ask, yep. uh, not ask, but uh, I think, was it Scribe? Yeah. There's loads of people in the mythic raid scene of kind of just said they prefer the smaller size. Yeah. I mean, you know what's, you know what's going to be the big thing? Whenever a lot of these get through the um, Dragon Songs Reprise progress, because I think a lot most of them are, well, I know um, uh, Liquid and Echo at least plan on doing it. Don't know if any other uh, WoW guilds do. But it'll be fun to see when they see how that feels. Mm. And that's obviously eight. But that's eight from, you know, basically you build an eight-man team for FF and you're sorted. Unless you're doing like kind of out there stuff like uh, DRS from Shadowbringers. But even then you don't need a team for that. You can kind of pug it. So you need eight-man team. That's your sorted. That's your static sorted. So like, I would love to see how they feel about that going uh, if they actually get through it in terms of it being handier. Obviously, it's a completely different game, but certainly very interesting. That's for yeah. Sure. So, uh, like, overall, this is still a big old upgrade. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I guess it'll be interesting for some of the guilds who maybe would, like, jump from heroic to heroic or something. But, I mean, at mm. least for the way that we play, this would be a very welcome system and an absolute upgrade because yeah. um, we do normal sort of more casually, uh, you know, just sort of chilling out. Um, usually because, I mean, at least for us, uh, you know, if we've taken a break from raiding at some stage, it's kind of nice to hop back in and play, you know, normal, yeah. maybe with 10 to 12 people, because uh, it's just a more, I don't know, casual issue experience. Um, but then the plan is usually to step it up to the, the try hard, the more try hard stuff. Yeah. I which, uh, I mean, a system like this completely supports. We probably yep. would not feel like we had to do as much uh, you know, gallivanting around in Mythic Plus and stuff. I so would. I it's cool. I'm going to largely dis. Okay, fundamentally, principally, yes, I'm trying to agree. But I'm going to say that this is the most fucking stingy shit I've ever seen in my life. You have to kill twenty bosses to upgrade one item. If you're doing heroic, that's like if you're clearing heroic, that's every two weeks. That's one guaranteed upgrade item every two weeks. That feels stingy enough. But if you're progressing heroic. That's just, that's so slow. 
you're talking like you, you know like three four a week three four five a week and then it slowly goes up but that means you're looking at like four or five weeks and i don't think that just seems pretty stingy to me generally especially when you think about you know if you're if you buy your three fated ones right after six weeks that's going to be 60 boss kills you're going to be able to upgrade all three of those yeah uh basically as you get them but then that means you don't get that for your other ones for another like two weeks three weeks i guess the way that they've yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it's like case of yeah should we be should we have to spend all of the stuff because we're kind of earning it just to spend it on the dinars so yeah it's weird it's weird it's remember weird. or a great vault threshold yeah great vault still exists and it's uh it's, yeah. they, they remember they think the great vault is a really good system and a success yeah, I, um, so I, 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 I would. We exist in that world still. I would very much love to have a to have a conversation with them about why they think that, because obviously they have access to data and information and thoughts that I don't have access to. Mm. So I think even you know, Scar's artist team this long ago is like, ask why. If you don't, if you don't know why, think deeper. Or you know, maybe you're thinking from a different perspective. It's like I'd love to know why they think that's true because I definitely am like eh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Just speed up loot, please. Things that... Things that you can make a logical argument, you know, oh, this is bad yeah. for the game for all these reasons, here's all the psychology. Yeah. Um, you know, ultimately, if it's the Skinner box earning the big reward at the end of the week, like, it just works. That's why yeah. it's done. It just works. Yeah. You know, so... Yeah, for sure. Um, it's like the world where that didn't work yeah. is a world where people are more intrinsically motivated and mm. can have more fun yeah. with less need for things like this, but we unfortunately are not wired that way and we're not in that world. Yeah, well, it's not even just that. It's it's obviously, like, I don't mind it being just a loot box. I mean, personally, I'd rather they just went, you don't get a Skinner box at the end of the week, mm -hmm. you instead get more loot. I'd rather have that, but I understand that being a point of excitement. My issue with it more than anything else is that negative uh, side of the bell curve, which, absolutely, this doesn't taint my opinion of it whatsoever, is mostly fucking me so far but oh yeah you yeah, had an absurd I've, time with tear yeah and even i got a i got a good time as soon as ca the creation catalyst unlocked and even last week i got tear in it and i'm like i don't fucking need this anymore oh my god this system's so shit that's that was my immediate feel was like why can i literally not have one good week and that's the case yeah, of like you, man. how many people are in that part of the bell curve with me who are like this game is actually fucking fingering me raw and i do not like this at all is that how many is that worth it probably obviously data wise maybe i don't know i don't know but yeah yeah well uh there we go i suppose that was an interesting last minute thing yep um yeah wow interesting so there you go i guess yeah. i saw this as oh is this like a deterministic titan forging in which case titan forging yeah. was all about getting slightly better uh, better than you deserved for that content yeah yeah in a way to like uh keep repeated doing the same thing feel rewarding to people yeah so uh this is i guess a different and more defensive you could sort of say play this is the, mostly the, yeah. aimed at this is mostly aimed at slicing a part of the bell curve that doesn't serve the game well and at least in that capacity i support it yeah Hiring so what's doing uh based on what scars has posted this, this is very much a that is a system that's there supported to design or designed to yeah, designed to support the dinars, yeah. the deterministic buying stuff, because the only other way they could do that is with like an achievement for killing certain heroic bosses on faded week or something. But then where do you put that boss? Versus someone who wants to kill two bosses for ten weeks, if you follow. Also, like, if, man, if this is a shorter or more, just keep the dinar quest going. That's that's exactly man, like, yeah. What, what if what if you say want to play DPS for a bit in your paladin? Yeah, then uh, I guess I can pick the right trinkets for my spec uh, ahead of time and think about it. Yeah. Or or if I don't do that, I can go and fuck myself, which is how this system is. And that's the thing. It's so defensive where it's like they clearly think that gearing is so much of where their engagement comes from over time I, I that mean, they are definitely is. like, fuck, we, we, we absolutely cannot give them more than a millimeter here. Otherwise, they'll stop playing our game. Is, and it, that's so full of fear. But it, it is, but their fear of that is also, I mean, completely founded. Yeah. And it's also where boosting comes from. Exactly, yep. <laughs> exactly. So, and that's the thing, like, that's the point where it's like boosting's engagement. People log in to get boosted better than not fucking logging in. Yeah, it keeps the economy going around. Yep, and that's the keeps, stuff where, like, people playing. This, 
I I don't want to say it because it seems like such an exaggeration. It seems so overblown. But like I, the more I think about, it, the more I think World of Warcraft gearing is really rotten to its core, and we haven't seen like the full manifestations, or we don't quite smell it yet, or something like that. That's how I kind of feel, well, but also a lot of that feel, because that's not a logical conclusion, that's an emotional reaction, a lot of that is tainted by my largely negative experience of gearing in Shadowlands so far. And I, it's like, I didn't have the same problem so much in Legion, but then I played the game more because there's more content and I enjoyed it more, so I wouldn't say that is like a fact, that's more how I feel about it at the minute. I feel that... Um, there was a lot of positive that came for what Dragonflight gearing is going to look like, even just yes. based on the crafting stuff. For sure, yeah. So 100%. it could be the plenty of concerns that we have here. Like, even the way that they talked about bot reagents that you'll just get from raiding yeah. that can go into crafting gear. Yeah. That almost sounds like a weird version of Valor Points. Just yeah. that instead of a vendor, it's another player. Which is an upgrade for sure. Yeah. Assuming, so. assuming the players are there to do it, but yeah. Oh, we talked a lot about gearing today. Yep. We did. That's uh, pity that the first 40 minutes of it, it's gone in the bin. Uh, but <laughs> well, it was. That's what it is. For everyone watching, it was good content at the time. That's it. That's it. Your content was. There. FOMO content. No, no, it's not FOMO content. Okay. It was nerfed. <laughs> it was nerfed after you experienced it. So you got to experience the initial version. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. <laughs>